just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave For blessings, Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you, and I'm sorry. When I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry. When I just sang another song, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. wanna sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never wanna leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't want Nothing else, 
Nothing else will do I just want Oh, 
Yeah. 
receive my worship All of my worship You, Lord, you are worthy Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's continue to worship. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To your will, O God. To your way. Yes, Lord. 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 Let's continue to worship. Yes, Lord. Jesus. 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 You're welcome, Lord. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. 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 Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To your will, O God. And to your way, O God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Take charge, O God. Take charge of everything that goes forth, O oh God. Take charge, O oh God. We surrender ourselves to you, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're just so thankful, O oh God, that you brought us here, O oh God, safely, O oh God. And we want to praise you. We want to thank you, O oh God, that you woke us up this morning, O oh God. You didn't have to, but you did it for us, O oh God. And we're just so thankful for that, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that we have health and strength, O oh God. We may be going through whatever, oh God, but we are here amongst the living, oh God. And we're going to praise you through it all, oh God. We're going to thank you through it all, oh God. We're not going to wait, oh God. We're going to thank you, oh God. We're going to thank you, oh God. We're going to thank you, oh God. We're going to praise you, oh God. Through it all, oh God. We're going to worship you. We're going to thank you, oh God. We're going to surrender all to you today, oh God. We're asking you to take charge, oh God. Take charge of the service, oh God. Take charge of the praise and worship, oh God. Take charge of the ushers, oh God. Take charge of everything that goes forth today, oh God. Take charge, oh God. We're surrendering it to you, oh God. Let it be pleasing and acceptable to you, oh God. We want you to hear our cries this morning, oh God. We want you to hear our mourns and our groans this morning, oh God. We're surrendering it all to you, oh God. We're thanking you this morning. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. We exalt you, oh God. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I pray, oh God, for those who are on their way asking for traveling mercies for them, oh God. I pray, oh God, I thank you that you brought us here, oh God. But Lord, continue, oh God, to just have your way, oh God, in this service, oh God, as we turn it over to you, oh God. For those who are watching or listening, whatever the means, they're tuning to their oh God. Help them to know they can cry out where they are, oh God, right where they are. You'll hear them, oh God. You sit high, you look low, oh God. You know all that's going on, oh God. Help them to worship you, oh God, in their homes, oh God, wherever they are, in their automobile, like wherever they are. Help them to praise you and worship you, oh God, like they're here with us this morning, oh God. I thank you this morning for who you are, oh God. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercies, oh God. Morning by morning, oh God, new mercies we seek, oh God. So, Lord, we surrender all to you today, oh God. Lord, I surrender my brothers and sisters who are here and those who are not here, oh God. You know, those who are in need of a healing touch this morning, oh God. I cry out to you, oh God. I know you're still in the miracle-making business, oh God. We know you'll still heal, oh God. you still sustain, oh God. you still provide, oh God. you still open up doors, oh God, things that seem impossible. you still make them possible, oh God. So we're surrendering our all to you this morning, oh God. And we're crying out to you, oh God. You know all that's going on in our individual life, oh God. We don't want to walk through that door the same way we came in, oh God. We want to surrender to you. We want to turn it over to you and watch you work, oh God. 99 and a half won't do. Let's give him our 100% today, oh God. So we thank you, oh God, for who you are, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for Pastor Barbara. I pray this morning, oh God, you'll touch her, oh God. I pray, oh God, you'll empty her of self, oh God, and fill her up, oh God. Fill her up, oh God. Lord, I pray you'll use her this morning, oh God. 
I pray for everyone who is watching and listening, oh God, who is going to hear her voice today, oh God, that they'll receive what you have for them, oh God, because we know you have something for each and every one of us today, oh God. So we surrender it to you, oh God, and say yes to you, oh God. We're going to give you our all today, oh God. We're going to hear what you're saying to us, oh God. And Lord, as we hear it, oh God, we're going to be obedient, oh God. We're going to be obedient, oh God. We're going to be obedient, oh God. We're not going to run, oh God. We're going to be obedient, oh God, to your will and to your way, oh God. So I thank you this morning for who you are, oh God. I pray, oh God, for a community, oh God. I thank you for Codman Park, oh God. I thank you for the breakthrough, oh God. I thank you for what you're doing there, oh God. I continue to worship you. I continue to trust you. I continue to know, oh God, that you will do something, oh God. You will be victorious, oh God. You will get the victory in the hand, oh God. So we're thanking you in advance, oh God, and we're claiming it, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We're claiming it, oh God. We're claiming it, we're claiming it, we're claiming it, we're claiming it, oh God. In the name of Jesus, break through, oh God. Break through, oh God. Answer prayers, oh God. We're claiming to oh God in the name of Jesus, oh God. I started a radio station to you this morning, oh God. You know all that's going on, all the different things that's trying to creep up, oh God. But I surrender to you this morning, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. I pray, oh God, that no weapon formed against us will prosper, oh God, this morning, oh God. So take away all the glitches, oh God. Take away all that's going, oh God. I pray, oh God, you'll bring Pastor Bruce some comfort this morning, oh God. Because you're in the miracle-making business. You still hear him, oh God. Help him to just trust you this morning. Uplift him. Be with him, oh God. Give him that balance, that rest, oh God. Just be all he needs you to be, oh God. I thank you for PK, oh God. I thank you for what you're doing in her life. You brought her through the surgery safely. I'm just so thankful, oh God. And Lord, as she continues to recuperate, oh God, I know, God, you're going to strengthen her. I know, God, that you're going to get all the honor and all the praise, oh God. We can't wait, oh God, for her to share her testimony. We can't wait for her to tell us about your goodness, oh God, about your grace, about how you brought us through, oh God. So we're thanking you in advance with her, oh God, because we know, God, you're going to be victorious in her life, oh God. I thank you for all my brothers and sisters who are sick and shutting, oh God. For those who are looking to you for continued healing, I thank you for Brother Scott. I thank you for Sister Sandra, oh God. I thank you for her brother. I thank you for her nephew, oh God. I thank you for Christine. I thank you for Nadine, oh God. I thank you for Sister... Um, I just thank you this morning, oh God, for just all those who are God who are trusting you this morning, oh God. Continue healing, oh God. Sister Hanid, oh God, continue to be your all in all, oh God. Sister Tina, oh God, I thank you for her this morning, oh God. Uplift her spirit this morning, oh God. Be all she needs you to be, oh God. Comfort her, oh God. Be all that she needs you to be this morning, oh God. You know her needs, oh God. We're coming in agreement, oh God, and crying out to you, oh God, on her behalf, oh God. Do a work, oh God, in her life, oh God. Brother Frank, I thank you for him, oh God. All those, oh God, who are looking to you for healing this morning, I cry out to you, oh God, and I trust you, oh God. Because we know, oh God, that you heal, oh God. We know you restore, oh God. We know you do it all, oh God. So remind them this morning, oh God, that you hear their prayers, oh God. Remind them, oh God, that you hear their mourns and their groans, oh God. You are there, oh God, with them, oh God. I thank you for who you are, oh God, in our life. I surrender marriages to you, oh God. I pray, oh God, you continue to help us to live the way you call us to live, oh God. Put you first, oh God, in our marriage, oh God. Put you first, oh God, and just watch things fall in place, oh God. I thank you, God, for who you are, oh God. Help us, oh God, to continue to worship you, to praise you, to surrender it all to you today, oh God. To praise you in advance, oh God. No matter what our situation is, oh God. Just to praise you in advance, oh God. To trust you in advance, oh God. That you're going to be victorious, oh God. You're going to do what you said you'll do, oh God. That's the one thing about you, oh God. You cannot lie. And we thank you for that, oh God. Have your way, oh God, in our life. As we say yes to you this morning. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We want to welcome all of those who are watching us from around the globe. We welcome our church members who cannot be present this morning. We welcome those who are watching for the very first time. Although you're not here, we hope and pray that you will be able to feel like you were with us and you are also worshiping and listening to the word with us. We are looking forward to meeting you when you come to visit us in person. Thank you for tuning in and may the service bless, bless and touch your life.
Good morning, everyone. Due to the winter storm, we are not in the sanctuary today. But on behalf of Pastors Bruce and Karen Wall, the ministerial staff, and the entire GMCC family, we welcome you who are joining us via the live streams and social media platforms to those who recently found us and our regular viewers. If you are logging on via bostonpraiseradio.tv, gmccboston.org, or Pastor Bruce's Facebook page, please be sure to leave your comments. We love hearing from you. Now, here's what's happening in church news this week. Please pray for and send a card to those that are sick and shut in. Jeremiah 17 verse 14 says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Please continue to pray for healing for the following members. Pastor Karen, Brother Rashawn, Sister Sandra, Brother Richard, Sister Tina Lee, Brother Ulysses. As we continue to pray for you, please feel free to make your prayer concerns known by calling the church at 617-282-0685 or by joining us for prayer on Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. and Saturdays at 7 a.m. The number is 848-220-3100 and the access code is 313-13131. For afternoon intercession, Monday through Friday, 12 to 12.30 p.m., the number is 978-990-5000, and the access code is 350-413-POUND. Thursday night prayer for our pastors at 8 p.m., the number is 848-220-3100, the access code is 313-13131. And on Friday nights, you can join us for Friday night prayer meeting, which can be seen on Pastor's Facebook page or by going to gmccboston.org and click the live stream. Ministry leadership meeting will be held on Saturday, February 5th. For additional information regarding church activities, see the bulletin or visit our website, www.gmccboston.org. Please be safe if you have to go outside, everyone. Have a blessed day and a wonderful week. Yahweh wars heaven. Spirit God, not by might, not by power, but by your Spirit God, say your Spirit God. Oh,
His praise Come shall on, continually yeah. be in my mouth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Speak Thank you, Jesus. Speak. Thank you, Lord. I bless your holy name. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. the church say yes 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 oh yes 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 
Spirit is within. 
hold us close. We are not alone. And I give God all the glory, praise, and honor for that. Let's give him more praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Now, this song, I thought Pastor was going to cue it up for me. I don't know if Sister Renee is going to do it, but see how God works? I got gotcha. you. Come on back, Pastor Hobbs. Thank you so much. But this song... It does leave me time to say, when we sang forever is a long time, don't you know we're going from here to glory, those of us who believe to praise him forever, yeah. forever. Yeah. Yes. And this song, you know, God just gives you good confirmation. You know, he, he tells, tells you what to do when you ask him. And this song is called I'm Blessed, and I want you to know, and you all, when you, you get the, the, you know, the repeats or whatever, you are blessed. I'm not just talking about me, sweet lamb. I'm talking about we are blessed. Amen? So um, it has a quick pickup, so y'all pray that I can get it and then be on the way with it, okay? Lord, I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm blessed beyond reason. Lord, I'm blessed. I'm blessed beyond what eyes can see. And when I think about all you've done for me, my Lord, my soul gets excited. Cause I'll be praising you to eternity Yes, Lord, I'm blessed Oh, yes I'm blessed beyond reason, my Lord And Lord, I'm blessed I'm blessed beyond what eyes can see Oh, yes, and when I think hey, about all you've done for me, my Lord, my soul gets excited because I'll be praising you through eternity. Oh, you've been good. You've been good to me Lord, you've been good So good, so good Lord, you've been good to me 
to me You've been good Yes You've been good to me My Lord And my soul is excited Cause I'll be praising you through eternity You can turn it up a little Say you've been good Sila, Sila That means think about it You've been good to me When I think about it, Lord You've been good So good, so good Yay! Lord, you've been good to me So gets happy. Yes, it does. Said my soul gets happy. See la, see la. Said my soul gets happy. When I think about it, Lord, my soul gets happy. See la, see la. I said my soul gets happy. Yes, it does. My soul. My soul gets happy, oh, yeah, eternity, yeah, hey, I'll be praising you through eternity, so long, I'll be praising you through eternity, yes, I will, I'll be praising, praising through eternity, Praising you through eternity. Yeah. Lord, I'll be praising you through eternity. Sila. Praising, praising through eternity. Susie King Taylor. Susie King Taylor most certainly deserves a tombstone, and she finally received one on October 2, 2021, thanks to former Boston resident Rebecca Bird Smith. As a college student, this young historian, Rebecca, in completing her undergraduate thesis project on Susie King Taylor, discovered that this first African American Civil War nurse did not have a tombstone and she set out to see that she received one. So on Saturday, October 2nd, a ceremony was held to commemorate the legacy of Susie King Taylor. Rebecca was the catalyst in the process of grants being written with the outcome of a beautiful stone, which was unveiled on her grave site at the Mount Hope Cemetery on Rock Hill Street between the neighborhoods of Rosendale and Mattapan. Rebecca, along with her husband, city officials, and members of the community, witnessed this historic event. So who was Susie King Taylor? She can be described as a wartime shero or heroine, who was born enslaved in 1848 near Savannah, Georgia. Against all odds, Susie was sent by her grandmother to be educated in two secret schools taught by black women. This allowed her to later teach other African-American children and adults during the war and to become the first African-American in Georgia to openly educate other African-Americans. At the age of 14, she became free when her uncle led her out to a federal gunboat traveling the waters near Confederate-held Fort Pulaski. Susie, along with thousands of other African-American refugees, sought refuge behind Union lines on the Georgia Sea Islands. Shortly after, she became part of the first South Carolina Volunteers, later known as the 33rd U.S. Colored Infantry, which was the first all-black regiment in the U.S. Army. She performed many tasks in the regiment, including nursing, cooking, and laundry but was most valued as a reading and writing teacher for the formerly enslaved members of the regiment. In addition, 
Susie served as a nurse at a hospital for African American soldiers in Beaumont, South Carolina, where she met and worked with Clara Botton. For over four years, Susie worked in the regiment and did not receive any pay. Susie married Sergeant Edward King in 1862 with hopes of continuing her teaching career at her own private school. Her dreams failed when her husband died in a work-related accident at the pier where he worked the same year her school opened. This forced her to seek employment as a domestic servant. In 1872, Susie's employment moved her to Boston. She later married Russell Taylor in 1879. In 1902, Susie authored Reminences of My Life in Camp with the 33rd United States Colored Troops, late 1st South Carolina Volunteers. She was the only African-American woman to publish a memoir of her wartime experiences. In Boston, she also lived the life of an activist. Susie had become an outspoken early racial justice activist, stood firm against racial prejudice and discrimination. She was also involved in Corps 67 of the Women's Relief Corps, an auxiliary unit to the Civil War Veterans Units. They did everything from helping to collect names of those who had fought, to assisting in hospitals, checking on the ill or disabled, and tending to the cemeteries. Susie eventually served as president of this organization in 1893. Susie died in 1912, having achieved many firsts in her lifetime and overcoming much adversity. Yes, she deserves a tombstone. Her rich legacy will not be forgotten for generations to come. Her incredible life, outstanding accomplishments, and her determination to help elevate others will and should be remembered and celebrated. Good morning, church. This is a time of service that we give back to the Lord, just a little bit of what he lent to us. So as you prepare your tithes and offering and follow the directions of the usher, Father God, this is the day that you created. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, may we be glad and cheerful givers as we give back just a smidgen of what you lent to us, Lord. Lord, bless those who are able to give as well as those who are not able to give, Lord God. Lord, may we be good stewards of what you entrusted in each and every one of us, Lord. So, Lord, I just thank you and I praise you for what you're going to do with this offering and tithes, Lord God, in Jesus' name. So, those who are at home, if you want to pay your tithes from your house, you can actually go into gmccboston.org slash give, and you can follow the prompts for push pay or PayPal. For those who have push pay and PayPal on your phone, you can actually pay your tithes and offerings just from your, your phone that way. Or you can actually text your tithes into, uh, let's see what it is, 77977 and type GMCC give, or you can text your tithes and offering that way. Or you can mail it into the church at 670 Washington Street, Dorchester, Mass, 02124. And, or you're like me, the ones who are sitting here, I actually have my check right here. So please follow the directions of the ushers. God bless.
Amen. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have our scripture reading. And what I'd like you to do is, whether you have a Bible with you or whether you have an uh, electronic Bible, I want you to turn to the Old Testament book of Habakkuk. Turn to chapter 2, and we'll read from verses 1 to 3. Habakkuk 2, verses 1 to 3. And I'd ask that you stand in honor of God's word. Habakkuk 2, 1 to 3. I'll be reading from the NIV. It reads as follows. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give this complaint. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Amen. thankful this morning for the gift of salvation. This song talks about how Jesus saves and how we are called um, when we're saved to share that good news with other people. So those of us who have been saved and have experienced Jesus's goodness can testify and be a witness that he saves. Amen. 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 Amen.
saves. I don't know about you, but he saved me from a mess. A mess that I got myself into. Jesus saves. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Corrine, for ministering to us, to the praise and worship team this morning. For all those that have joined together in heart and spirit, amen. It's good to see you this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's good to be here this morning, amen. God woke us up when he didn't have to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you this morning for being in our midst already. Father, we ask that you would bless the preparation and the meditation, that your word would go forth and accomplish that what it sets out to do. Open our hearts and our minds, O oh God, that we might receive all that you have for us this morning. Whether in this sanctuary or listening by the airways, we particularly ask, O oh God, that you would bless our pastor this morning, that you would renew his strength, God, that you would bless Pastor Karen, that you would heal her body. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I thank God for the privilege of standing at his pulpit, because I know I'm not worthy, but yet he chose to use a wretch like me. Hallelujah. So the word this morning comes from Habakkuk chapter 2. Pastor Greaves read it for us, but I encourage you to reopen your Bible and to follow along. Make sure I don't slip nothing in on you. Amen. But follow the word for yourself so that you can dine upon it for yourself. And um, I don't know if you guys were able to find the song that I asked for. Okay, so I, I'm not right now, but there's a song that you all know I, I love music and I love worship. And um, I wish I could sing, but I think God knew that if he gave me a voice, I'd never shut up. And so he gave me another gift. But I want us at the end of the message, we'll worship God in this song because I believe it kind of encapsulates everything that I believe God wants to say to us this morning. How many of you are waiting on the Lord for something? I want you to be honest. You're waiting on God for something. Well, I've come this morning to encourage you and tell you to wait on the Lord, to not give up. Know that the appointed time is coming, amen? I believe that that's what God wants to say to us this morning because we have trouble waiting. As human beings, it is generally not one of our strengths. We're, we're kind of impatient people. I want you to turn to someone near you and say, wait, the appointed time is coming. Amen. We're going to testify to one another and encourage one another. Wait, the appointed time is coming. The issue of time, the appointed time, is seen throughout the Old and New Testament. Time is found in the Bible, the word time, 2,183 times. And the word appointed is found 500 and 15 times. No, I did not go through the Bible and count them. I looked it up on Google. Amen. I believe someone this morning needs to be encouraged today to wait on the Lord. Our main text today comes from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And the major theme of Habakkuk is about trying to grow from a faith of perplexity and doubt to one of absolute trust in God. Habakkuk addresses his concerns over the fact that God would use the Babylonian empire to execute judgment on Judah for their sins, and he's upset about this. And you see in the book of Habakkuk that it was written kind of in a dialogue or conversation between God and the prophet Habakkuk. 
You see, in the beginning, the prophet, this man of God, he's overwhelmed by all the stuff, the devastation that surrounds him. He's focused on his circumstances. How many of you have ever been focused on your circumstances? He's focused on his circumstances and he can't get his mind and his eyes off of that. He can't see anything else but what's wrong. He looks at the terrible things that are happening in his country and he's disturbed because he knows God's judgment is coming. In his conversation with God in chapter two, we see that God responds to Habakkuk and he tells him that righteous people live by faith. Now this is important and for those of you that are taking notes, I want you to write that down that righteous people live by faith. Righteous people, those who are in Christ, those who have been clothed with Christ's righteousness because we have none of our own, are people who live by faith and not by sight. Yet this prophet, this man of God was struggling with focusing on all that was going wrong. I want you to know this morning that even in the midst of our suffering and destruction and oppression, that God tells Habakkuk that righteous people live by faith. So what is faith? We know that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us this. So if you wanna know, well, how do I wait on the Lord? The first thing is to live by faith, to trust God. Take your eyes off your circumstances and focus on God and his promises to you. Trust God to do what he said he will do. Amen? I know it's easier said than done, though. Somebody told me that this week when I was encouraging them. And I know that I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been through. And you don't know what I've been through. But what I know I know is that if you wait on God, he will see you through. I'm a living witness. He's seen me through. In Genesis 18, verse 14, it says, is anything too difficult for the Lord? That's a question I'm asking you this morning. Is anything too difficult for the Lord? And if you really believe that, then you should wait on the Lord. Your appointed time is coming. I'm telling you this morning because we struggle with waiting. Today you may be struggling at home and you may feel like God has forgotten you. You might be laying in that rehab this morning wondering if the surgery worked or wondering if you'll ever get out of this rehab or is this where you'll have to reside for the rest of your life. I'm telling you this morning, wait on God. Your appointed time is coming. Know that he hasn't forgotten you. If you were crying out to God like the psalmist David did in Psalms 13, 1, David said, how long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? You see, the psalmist, God was, David was a man after God's own heart, but yet he struggled with waiting on God. On more than one occasion, he took things into his own hands and made a mess of it, amen? If you know anything about his life. But he struggled, and in Psalms 13, 1, he cries out, he says, How long, Lord, will you forget me? See, he kind of felt like God was sitting on the sideline, that God had somehow become a spectator of all that he was going through. But I want you to know this morning, wait on the Lord, Wait for his appointed time. God is not a spectator. He's in the midst of all that you're going through and all that you're dealing with. You see, Ecclesiastes 3.1 says to everything there is a season and there's a time to every purpose under heaven. There is an appointed time for everything. He may not come when you want him, but God is always on time. There's an appointed time. 
Psalmist Davis also realized in um, Psalms 31, 15, he says, my times are in your hands. See, God recognizes in our humanity that we'll struggle with waiting on him. But at some point, you've got to yield and surrender to God and say, Lord, my times are in your hands. You got to give it up. You got to rest in him. You got to trust him. God determines how long we must wait. You might not think it's fear. You might think that God has forgotten you, but he hasn't. He's right there. God determines how long we wait. God determines the time of our deliverance. He determines the time for our breakthroughs and for our blessings. We see in scripture that Abraham waited 25 years before he saw the manifestation of God's promise to um, give birth to a child. Jacob waited 14 years, single sisters, I want you to hear this, and brothers too. Jacob waited 14 years to marry Rachel, the desire of his heart. And Joseph waited three years to be set free from jail for a crime he didn't even commit. And Jesus waited three days before being raised from the dead. In each of these examples, there was a purpose for the waiting. Wait on the Lord because God has a purpose for your appointed time. Someone pointed out in their message, and the minister's name escapes me, but he said that Jonah was in the belly of a big fish for three days and three nights. You know the story. He had to wait for God to deliver him. And this preacher went on to say that the miracle was not in the fact that the fish spit him out after three days and three nights. The miracle was in the fact that Jonah waited on God for his deliverance from the belly of a fish, where all the acidic juices were at work. Anybody with acid reflux can imagine what it's like in the belly of a fish. With all those acidic juices flowing around in his digestive system, breaking down and deteriorating everything else that is in his stomach. But Jonah didn't suffocate. Jonah didn't drown. The acid didn't touch him. He was not digested because God had not forgotten him. He wasn't broken down. You see, the message in this today is that you might feel like you've been swallowed up by all your circumstances and your difficulties and your distress. You may even be in the midst of your enemies attacking you, but know that you were also in the midst of your miracle. Hallelujah, you're in the midst of your miracle. It's about to happen. You just need to wait on God a little longer. His appointed time is coming when he's going to set you free and your enemy will have to let you go and you'll be released from those things that have kept you bound for so long. Every moment you wait on God, every moment that you wait on God is an opportunity for growth. Every challenge, every trial is designed to make you strong in him. It's an opportunity to exercise your faith, to trust God, to have absolute trust in him, no matter what your circumstances look like, to see God work on your behalf. Habakkuk 2, 1 through 3 says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the towers and will watch to see what he will say unto me. He was waiting for God to answer. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. He knew he wasn't quite right. He knew he had a little attitude going on. Verse two, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it. How do we wait on the Lord? We live by faith and we write the vision down. What are you waiting on God for? Begin to envision it now. Envision your dream. Envision your healing, your deliverance, your breakthrough. 
Write down what it will look like when you don't feel lonely anymore. Write down what it will look like and what it will feel like when you're healed and can walk again. Envision your marriage when restoration takes place and forgiveness takes place between you and your husband or your wife. Envision it, write it down. When you walk in wholeness, write your vision down. It's a way of speaking to those things that are not as though they are. Tell somebody about what you're believing God for. Isaiah 60, verse 22 says, When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Somebody say hallelujah. When the time is right, God promises to make it happen. That's God's promise to each and every one of us this morning. In Habakkuk 3, in the New King James Version, it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. In other words, it means that eventually it will be manifested. And it says, and not lie, though it tarries. In other words, though it's, it's taken a while to come, know that it's coming. God says, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. The New American Standard Bible says it, verse 3, this way. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. It hastens. It means it's coming. It's working towards the goal. And it will not fail. It will not deceive. And it will not disappoint. Amen? Wait for it. Because it's coming. In other words, it may not come when you want it. But there's an appointed time and it is coming and though it may seem like it's taking a long time, don't give up, wait for it. You won't be disappointed. God will do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever ask him for. So wait for it, it's right around the corner. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. That's the word of God, that's not just me talking. But that's the word of God. Wait for it. It's coming. It's on its way. It's going to come right at the perfect moment. When the time is right, the Lord will make it happen. For this reason, I'm encouraging you this morning to wait for the Lord. I joined the psalmist in Psalms 30, verses 5 and 6, and I say, Wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait. In his word do I hope. Hope in his word this morning. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord, I say. How do you wait on the Lord? Live by faith. Write the vision down. Trust in his word. Be of good courage. You see, the weak can't do it. You got to have some courage. You got to be able to stand upon God's word. Five, know he will strengthen you. Don't you love him? He doesn't just tell you to do these things and not equip you and enable you to do it. But he'll strengthen you while you're waiting. And then lastly, how do you wait on the Lord? With great expectation. With great expectation. Because you know your blessing is coming. You know your breakthrough is coming. You know your deliverance, your healing, whatever it is you need, whatever you're waiting on God for, it is coming so you can wait with joy and courage and great expectation because it'll be even better than you could have imagined. You'll look at that vision that you wrote down and you'll see that God but far exceeded that which you wrote. The appointed time is coming. I promise you, God will not be late because he's an on-time God. He's never missed an appointment and he's never lost a battle. I love it because his calendar is never too full for me. He always is there for me. If I've not given you enough this morning, if I haven't given you enough of a reason to wait on the Lord for the appointed time, I'll say this to you in closing. If for no other reason, 
You ought to wait on the Lord and be of good courage because Christ came and he will come again at the appointed time to claim those who have waited on him. Amen. Amen. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Brother James Wilson sings a song to wait. We're going to worship God in this song. Amen. And then I'll extend an invitation for those that want to accept Christ. There's not a mountain too tall There's not a problem so small That Jesus can't resolve In time you get involved It's our God, He cares about us He cares about us so
because and we I'm trust not you. Turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning I'm back not no matter how long now. it takes. I'm not turning back now. I'm going to wait on you. Just what he said he would do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just worship God. Thank him right now. Thank him for the promises that have already been unleashed in the heavenly realm. And we will see the manifestation. So many churches will have a box in their church that for prayer requests. But I'm going to set one up that says for answer prayer. Amen. Because we know that he's going to answer them. And we're going to then read them out. You don't have to put your name, the way about your business being told. But when God answers your prayers and when God moves on that very thing you've been waiting for him to do, let us know so that we can rejoice with you, so that we can give thanks with you. Amen. If there's anybody here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ, I want to extend an invitation from the Father in heaven to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. See, we only can wait on him when we are in him. Amen? And so if you want to be able to wait on God and if you want to have your strength renewed each and every day as you wait 
for God to move and to act on your behalf, you need to enter into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's really simple. God doesn't make it difficult. All you got to do is confess your sins. Confess your need for him in your life. Believe that God the Father sent his only begotten son into the world that whosoever would believeth would not perish but have life eternally. That's why we're waiting on him. That's why we're trusting in him. You simply pray that prayer and then you surrender yourself and tell him, Lord, I want to live for you. If there's anybody this morning in the sanctuary and you want to receive Christ, just raise your hand and one of the pastors will lead you with that. If you're at home and you want to make that confession, simply pray and ask Christ to enter into your heart. Confess your sins. Confess with your mouth that you believe Jesus Christ to be the Son of God and that he died for your sins and you will be saved. But then we want you to contact us and let us know so that we can walk with you and help you grow in faith, amen? So that you can wait on God to move and act on your behalf. So that you can fulfill the purpose to which he created you. We thank you, God, this morning. We thank you for your word and for your encouragement to wait upon you. For our appointed time is coming. Father, I pray that you would bless us. And as we stood in declaration that we won't turn back, God, we wait upon you for our strength, for our continued encouragement to stand upon your word. Bless us now as we go our separate ways. May we continue to walk according to the moving of your Holy Spirit in our lives, God. In Jesus' name we all say, amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming out this morning. Also, I do want to just remind, due to um, technical difficulties, um, we will not have the Night of Hope, but we will have a spectacular um, ministry in November for the Night of Hope. So wait with expectation for November. God bless you.